So the subject of today is endgame strategy, lesson 415, pawn endings. There's a lot of prior knowledge and um, we're going to address that first. And you can see the prior knowledge that is required, square of the pawn, king activity, shielding off, uh, blocking off the king, key squares, rook pawn, outside pawn and creating a pass pawn. So that's what's on the menu for today. We have a pawn on b3 and we're going to discuss the square of the pawn. And the square of the pawn is relevant to find out if the pawn can stop the pawn, if the king can stop the pawn if there are no other uh, factors in play. So this king on g4 is in the square and if the pawn would advance he can stop the pawn because he can walk over a diagonal and stop the pawn after it promotes. So the square of the pawn, pawn you make by drawing a diagonal and then drawing lines to make a square around that diagonal. Um, if the pawn would advance to b4, the square of the pawn is changing. So this is the square of the pawn. And the king has to step into this square in order to make a draw. If he continues to g5, he's outside the square and the pawn can promote and the king is too late. So let's return to the starting position. Um, if we look at this position, so we know the square of the pawn of b3. If the pawn is on b2, so if we draw it one back, the square of this pawn is the same as the square of the pawn on b3. So this is the square of the pawn on b2. And the reason is, like Hans pointed out, is that at the first move, this pawn can advance two squares at once. Very good. So let's go to the next example. Here we have a situation. And my question to you is, white would like to promote his pawn. Black's king is in the square. He would like to play king c4 and stop the pawn. Now we get to the second principle, and that's shielding off the king. And you can shield off the king by playing the move king d5. So that's the second principle. The black king has been shielded off and the pawn can advance. Question to you. In this position, who is winning? This is the basic position that is required for the key squares. Who is winning in this position and does it matter who is to move? Kaizen says opposition, but my question is, who is to move, uh, who is winning, and does it depend on who is to move? White wins regardless of move. Very good, Hans. Yes. So that is something basic knowledge to know. It doesn't matter who is to move, and you can use that when you get end games, and you can rely on this. So when you get your king to the sixth rank and your pawn is behind it, and the king is in front, it doesn't matter. If white is to move, goes to the side, king goes, and the pawn promotes. If we go to the other situation, um, 
let's go back this situation and black is to move king goes to the side and the pawn promotes so hans is right in both cases white is winning and it doesn't matter who is to move so that's a perfect position like kylie says and that is something to keep in mind okay let me go to the next position and let's see if the system is taking it over The next piece of knowledge that we have to know are key squares. So in green you see the key squares and in red of the black pawn and the, in green of the white pawn. So the key squares are squares and if the white king is occupying one of the key squares and the black king is in front of let's say for this pawn, if the white king would be on a4, or b4, or c4, and when it is about pawn b2, and the black king is somewhere on, let's say, uh, b6, white is winning. So when the pawn is on its own half of the board, it's two uh, moves ahead and one to the side. So it's like a knight move ahead with the square in between. Once the pawn has crossed the middle of the board, it's one move ahead and one to the side. So it is for the pawn on d5, it is c6, d6 and e6. For the pawn on b2, it's a4, b4, c4. And for the pawn on g6, it is f4, g4 and h4. And this doesn't apply to the rook pawns, so not the h and the H file, but it applies for the B to the G file. For the A and the H file, there are separate rules. <coughs> so now the question is, how do we get from this position, if we have a king on B4 or A4, to the perfect position that Kylie was mentioning? <coughs> so in this case, you can see white has occupied one of the key squares of the pawn on c2. Now the question is how to win this endgame. What would you play? Can you tell me? What would you play in this endgame to win the game? King c4. Yes, so what is important is to realize is that when we push a pawn, of course, the key squares are changing. So we know it's winning now. If we would play c3, the key squares are no longer b4, c4, and d4, but they changed to those three squares. And white is no longer able to occupy them. Black can just go to the side and white cannot occupy them. But by playing first king c4, black has to decide where to go. And now we can, in anticipation of moving the pawn and the new key squares, already occupy a key square and reach a winning position. So the king has to go back again. We can go here, king goes back, we play c4, king has to go to the side, we go to b6, king goes to c8, king goes back, king goes here, we push the pawn and we know that we have reached the basic position that is winning and we don't care who is to move because this is the winning position. So when we are having a position where we have occupied the key squares we know that we can transition from this 
into the basic position with the pawn on the fifth rank and the king in front of it. We just have to make sure that we are careful with pushing our pawns and that we are able to occupy the key squares belonging to the pushed pawn. And in this case, c3 and c4 will be a draw. And the only move that is winning is king c4. Okay. So black is to move in this position. And we have to decide what to do. We have a pawn on g3, the key squares of the pawn on g3 is a knight move and the square in between. And we have to anticipate the moves that white can do. And there are two moves that white can do. He can go here and we can go here. So which move to play for black to prevent white from occupying either g5 or f5 in the future? What would you play? King f6. So Jack is saying King f6. So now, so the way to think about it is to say if white plays, and Kaizen is also saying King f6, yes? If white plays King f4, then I will play King f6. If white plays King e4, then I will play King e6. As I have to anticipate both possibilities, I have to play another move. We will get to that in a minute. So imagine that we would play king f6. White plays king f4. We would like to go to one of these squares. Black has to prevent it. White goes to the side. And now black has to show face and white occupied one of the key squares. So we go back to the beginning. We are in this position. Yes, we say black has to anticipate king e4 and king f4 of white. It's black to move. So he wants to go to either e6 after king e4 or to f6 in the case of king f4. So you play here king f7 and after king f4 you go forward. And now white is unable to occupy that square, king f7. Very good. Welcome, Amir. Thank you for joining. Okay. Let's have a look at this position. So black is to move. So I would not think about terms of opposition or odd number of squares in between. I would just use the theory of the key squares. So we have a pawn here. The key squares of the pawn on f3 are g5, f5 and e5. What would be white's plan if black just walks around? White's plan would be to go here and eat the pawn. And at the same time, he would immediately be at a key square. So what to do for black in this position? How can you make a draw here? Because it looks like white is able to occupy the key squares and win the game. very easily just by capturing the pawn. Is there any way black can make a draw here? Amir says push the pawn. Okay, push the pawn. So we change the structure. Jack is agreeing. E4. E4. Okay. White is forced to take. We have a pawn on a new square. The key squares 
of that pawn are those three. What should black play? After e4 and then f takes e4. What should he play? Amiya is saying king g8. Hans agrees. Yes, so just as in the previous one, we have to anticipate two moves for white. King f5 and king g5. After king g5, we would like to be with our king on g7. After king f5, we would like to be with our king on f8, f7. So we are playing king g8 after, so after e4 takes king g8 and after king f5 threatening to go to one of the new key squares, we play king f7 and it is a draw. So changing the structure in the pawn ending and also changing by changing the structure the key squares can be a way to force a draw. So now we see a rook pawn. If white is to move, white can win this position by playing the king to g7, shielding off the black king. So there are no key squares when you talk about the rook pawns, the h and the a pawn. Black can draw if he can get to one of these squares. You'll see that in the next position. So black plays king f8. And now there are two ways. He can allow black to go into the corner and it's a stalemate. And of course, there is another way is that white says, I don't allow you in the corner, but he is trapping his own king in the end. And then it is white that is stalemated. So we saw the key squares and the key squares are important for the B to the G pawn. When you talk about the Rook pawn, these squares are the critical squares to occupy um, to make a draw. So you want to get to C1. Okay, one more question here. Black is to move. What would you play? Kylie, what do you think here, Kylie? What would you play? Tell me. King e5. Well, black is to move. So that's a good question. Who is to move? Black is to move. What would you play? Kylie, what would you play? King f8. So the key squares of this pawn are those three. So if white is able to eat the pawn on d5, white is winning. So black has to do something. And like we said before, Kylie, what can black do? What can black do to make a draw here? Change the structure, but how do you change the structure? Amir says d4, take. Now we have new key squares. Okay, so white has to anticipate two moves. Yeah, very good, Kylie. And now your move comes into play, yes? Because if he goes to f5, I want to be on f7. If he goes to e5, I want to be on e7. So 
we are playing king f8 and we make a draw like this by calculating the key squares. Okay. Black is to move. This one is a little bit more complicated. What would you play here to make a draw? Black is to move. Check. What are you thinking? What would you play here? Hans says f5. Yes. So just to make uh, understand. So if you would hold on to your pawn, he says, you know. So Hans is saying, I go here. And now king f7, Hans. So the key squares of this pawn are those three. Black has to move. And I occupy a key square. And white is winning. So f5 is the right move. King e5. At the moment that white takes on, takes here. Where do I want to be with my king? So I'm anticipating the move of white. So I have to be, if he takes here, then I want to be there. So I'm going to f8, and if he takes, then I'm going to occupy f7. Yes. So, based on the key squares, well, that's not. This is not triangulation. No, that's something else. But um, because he doesn't return to e seven. So let's return to this position. Yes, and because I think it's also very useful to see what happens if the king tries to defend like this. You can see it gets slowly squeezed from the side. What are the key squares of this pawn? Those three. Because he crossed the middle line, the Ecuador. We have the basic position, and white is easily winning. Yes, so this is an important technique to win the game. Black is to move here. How do you make a draw with black here? You have only two moves. So, give me a variation instead of just a move, because you have 50% chance. So, what to play? King a6 or King c6 and why? What is the variation? To hold on to the flank.
Yeah, so the rook pawn will not work because the king can always get, uh, so uh, let's say king c6, c4, and then the king can, after trading, walk to c8, and it's a draw, or to a8. So that is, that's easy, yes? So let's see king c6 what happens after king a5 what would you play after king a5 king c5 king and then what happens after king a6 King c6. The king, yeah, the king goes back, yes. So just to clarify, king a6, a4, trade, trade, king goes back, king goes back, king goes back, king goes back, and the black king has to blink. And white occupies one of the key squares of this pawn. It's still on its own half. So it's a knight move to both sides and the square in between, and white is winning. So I have a question for you. In this position, black is to move, or white is to move? In this position, who is winning? Who is winning in this position? And does it matter who is to move? Is it sometimes a draw, sometimes winning, depending on who is to move? Amir says it's a draw, Kaisen says. And so Amir and Hans did not clarify. Hans says it's a draw regardless. Oop, welcome, says easy win with king f5. But we want to know it for both sides, with both colors. So the question is what happens So Hans Detmar says a draw regardless of who is to move. Hoop says it's a win if white is to move. White. Kylie says white is winning but doesn't qualify. And Amy says draw regardless. Yeah, you would say, of course, when you look at the key squares, white cannot occupy the key squares. Hoop says it's a draw in both cases. So this is important one to know, yes? So, no, no, Hoop is changing his mind. White wins in both cases. Yeah, so King G8. So let's see what the variations are. All right, so king g8, how does white win after king g8? How does white win after king g8? King g6. King f8, how does white win?
king f6 yes so yes and if we now change the color and say white is to move let's go with hoops move king f5 and now we can do two things after king g8 we can just say we're getting back to the position that we already discussed and after king f8 we play king f6 so both are winning so we saw the basic position with the king in front when also in this position it doesn't matter who is to move which is important to know okay so let's apply it so if when you look at pawn endings many times they occur and you have to think whether there's a transition you can make and whether it will be a draw so in this position does white have time to capture the g4 pawn is it a draw or is black winning What do you think? It's a draw. Hoop says. Based on which principle? What is the idea of the claim that it's a draw? Black is winning, I think, but we need variation, if you think about it. In draw, the king has time to get back to the key squares. But this is a rook pawn, yes? This is a rook pawn, so there are no key squares. Or what are the key squares, I mean? Perhaps you, you mean... Yeah, so if we go back to the principle that we discussed before, so we get trades in the end. What Black is going to pick up the h5 pawn. And we say this is a draw if white can reach one of these squares. Yeah, so Amir is confirming that, yes. So if he can reach one of these squares, it's a draw, yes. And if you know that, C1 is kind of the closest. So then it makes it easy based on that principle to say, okay, knight takes g4, bishop takes g4, king b5, king f4, king takes a5, king e3, king b4, king d2, he gets to c1 and it's a draw. Yeah, so we have a principle. We know it's a rook pawn that is left. We want to get to c1. And then we calculate if we are in time to get to c1 and it's a draw. Yes. Something else that's going on. So after knight takes g4, um, imagine that black doesn't take. Um, actually, the bishop uh, is of is a white bishop and doesn't um, is unable to cover a1. So even without the knight, if the king could get back to a1, it would be a draw even without the knight. So, let's go to this position. How should black capture the pawn and does it matter? So black wants to capture the pawn on d7. Because the pawn is ready to promote. King takes e7. So I need I need a variation here, Amir. Why do you say that? Because it's 50% chance. We need logic. So why is it a draw? And why is why is and this is a rook takes d7, not a draw.
Yeah, so we get the king on e7 and then we get into a pawn ending. So why is that pawn ending a draw and how? The opposition square rule. So can you express it in terms of key squares? Yeah, so let's go with Amir, yes? So he's saying these are the key squares. So that's what we learned, yes? The pawn is on its own half. After exchanging, the black king will be on e7. What is the best way for white to try to get to the key squares? Yes. It is to play king g3 away from the black king. And so, now I'm looking at what Amir is saying. So he's saying, so let's go for the variation. King takes d7, rook, check. And now, um, Black hat has to anticipate white moving to these two squares, yes? So Amir was saying, I play king f6 here. King f6. Well, if play king f6, then I play king f4, yes, and then black has to blink and I get to a key square. So we are using our anticipation again and saying, okay, I have to anticipate that he can go to f4 or g4, and in that case I want to be on g6 or I want to be on f6. But I don't want to go there immediately. So Amir, you're correct. And Hans, king f7, and then after king. I get into a draw. So let's go back and see what the difference is. If I would take with the rook, yes. Okay, check. King goes here. And now the king, and now it's like. Um, impossible to make sure that he cannot occupy one of these squares. Um, so, I have, for instance, if I play it like this, I'm one tempo too slow. Yes. So you can see many times it is about transitioning into the end game. Yes. So, easy question, rook c8, is it correct in this position or not? You know, I want to get with my black king, I'm, I'm cut off, I'd like to be in front of the white pawn, so I'm going to force matters and play rook c8. Kylie, what do you think, Kylie? Or Jack? Rook c8. Is that enough for, is that a, a, the right way to go or not? Would you play that in a game? So you see, we are not having a pawn ending at the moment, but I have to know if I go into it, whether it will be a draw or not. Losing. He says it's a draw.
50% chance, huh? What's the right assessment? Okay, rook c8 loses. Rook takes c8, king takes c8. Key squares of the pawn. Those three. Right? He didn't cross the half yet. Two ways to go. King a4 or king c4. King goes here. Two potential squares. What do I play? Where do I want to be? I want to be here or here. So I play king b8 and anticipate the moves. So, and then it's a draw. Okay. So, is liquidating by means of rook takes g4 winning or not? What would you say? Or is it a draw? So, black says, you know, I just liquidate and then I win the end game. Okay, hoop is too strong. So hoop, I have to ask you just to give the others a floor for a moment because then they can find their own way. So hoop, please take a time out and let the others try to find the truth. A draw, Kaizen and Amir says a draw. So what's the follow-up? Rook takes g4. We need not only an assessment. And rook takes g4, f takes g4, king takes g4. How does it continue? What would you play next? With white to make the draw, Kaizen and Amir, because you're claiming it's a draw. So Kaizen is saying, rook takes g4, f takes g4, king takes g4, king d3, king f4, king d2, king c5, Amir is saying, and he holds it, king c5. So which variation do you think is correct? Would you go for Kaizen and go with the king to d2? Or would you go for Amir and go up with the king to c5?
Amir says he is getting convinced. Because we see an important idea, yes, king c5. Black plays his king here. Threatens to win the pawn, yes. So white can only do one thing, is cling on. Because if he can take it, uh, then... But now, white goes up, king f4. And that looks wrong, yes. White has to move away, wins the pawn, and on the next move will occupy one of the key squares. So look, let's go back to the idea. King d3, king here. And now Kaizen said very correctly, king d2, because after king e2 there would be king e4, and white would have to give away one of the key squares, and after king takes here, king e2, and it's a draw. Okay, so this is a very nice one. White is to play. And white says, I have a problem, you know, I'd like to walk with my king to f7 and then... But my the rook is keeping me from there. So, he says, I'm going to play queen e5 and I'm going to win the pawn ending so what do you think is this a good strategy and what are the variations do you think this is a winning pawn ending after rook takes the queen Kaizen says it's winning but I need some variations. So Kaizen, what do you think? So let's put it on the board. So this is kind of forced. What do you think black can do here? What are the principal lines that you have to think about? What would you calculate for black as a defense? Yeah, so one, very good. Kaizen says, I've seen one thing. Kaizen says, rookie five, king goes to g8. And we learned as a principle, the king activity is really important and the king has to help the pawn with the promotion. So he's going to e6, and after king f8 to d7. So Kaizen, I have one question. When you find out after king e6 that it's impossible to stop the pawn with king f8, it would be more logical to play g5 as your second move. So after king e6, black plays g5. How do you assess the resulting position? Is white winning or is it a draw or what's going on? Guys, and what do you think? So King G8 trying to block the pawn. King E6 supporting the pawn, going to D7. 
And then black says, well, I play g5. And if you run back, then, uh, so for instance, h takes g5, h takes g5, king f5, then I'm going to play king f7 and I'm, I occupy the key squares. So who's winning the pawn race? Both sides queen. White wins. But you say, I calculate draw as both sides queen, and then you said white wins. So white queens with check, yes? So, based on that, Black might decide King G8 is actually not a good move because White promotes with check and he wins because it's check. So what if Black decides as a defense? I'm just going to play G5. Take, take, and king g7 and make a draw. Guys, and what is your plan? So g5, take, takes, king takes g5, king g7. And you know, people say, I have the opposition. So is that a draw? What's going on there? I don't, I'm not going to g8 because you, you were winning with white because you promoted with check. So is that a way to make a draw then with g5? Okay, g5, h5, king g7, Amiga. And as soon as you play king e6, I play g4. And if you play e6, I play king to f8. Blocking the pawn. We had two basic positions. Do you remember them? Two perfect positions, as Kylie calls them. One was with the king in front of the pawn and the pawn on the fifth rank. What was the other perfect position? That was also winning, irrespective who was to move. Do you remember? Let me go back.
amount. Trying to find it. Okay, we're still here. Okay, I found it. Do you remember this position we discussed? Who is winning? And does it matter who is to move? Why it was winning and it didn't matter who was to move. Yes, very good. So remember that. When we go to this position, so G, sorry, so we play G5 takes, takes, king takes. The threat is, of course, king F7, king here. King G6. And how do we win in this position? How do we win here? E6. Yes. So let's see. Yes. And after King G8, how would you, what would you play here? King f6, king goes here, king goes here, and what do we have? Our first basic position. Yes. Okay, so now we're getting to our lesson. So if you have an extra pawn, what do you do? If you have an outside pawn, What is the way to win here? Decoy, yes. So you push the pawn. It's quite simple, yes. But this is just another principle, yes. And then you approach, and then he's way too late, and so the outside pawn distracts the king. That gives white the opportunity to eat black pawns, and he is too far away. So quite important. Same here. Yes, same situation. You can play a5 takes, king takes c5. King is much more active. So in end games, pawn endings, it's really about is my king active? Can I create a pass pawn? Is my opponent threatening anything? Okay. So let's go to this one. 
So in this position, white king cannot help. So what do I do? What do I do here with white? We just push, yes. B6, A takes B6 and A6 and wins, yes. Or even A6 immediately and then after. So you create a pass pawn, yes. In this position, we have to create a passed pawn. Who will be the past pawn, do you think? How do we create it? What do we play? Lure the king to the queen side. Okay. So, but how would what would you play? B three. Yeah. So the principle is that the passed pawn goes first. So we play B three. King can do whatever he wants, and then A three, and then king goes back, and then B four. Yes, we would go with the a pawn first, of course, that would be bad because there's a4 and now he's fixed. And then black would be better. Yeah, so if you would play a3 immediately and then after a4 you're stuck, yes, you cannot play b4 anymore because he takes off his son. Okay, defending options in this case. What can you do with white here? White is to play. King b3. Yeah, but see, King b3, he takes the pawn and he will get to one of the key squares because King c3. Yes, but you see. Hold one moment. shouldn't give the pawn away, although I could do it because I'm on the key square of the b7 pawn. And now I have, of course, a lot of tempi with my b7 pawn, yes? So these rules of the Key squares don't work if black has an extra pawn. So what do you do? Um, he says king a5, and if he takes the pawn, suddenly, stalemate. Yes. Okay, let's do a few more exercises, and then we call it a day. Okay, this is the first exercise. I had a game, but we are already one and a half hours almost on the way. So, 
I had a nice, very nice game. So, what do you play here? What do you play? Yeah, so you put a pawn in between, huh? So what's the right order? F6. Can you calculate down hands? Well, how does it end? After F6 takes h4, h5, and then how is it, can, can white stop the promotion or what's going on? Yeah, so you're running with the pawn. So I'm. I'm. My, my question is, if the f pawn also starts to run, who's first? Right. Does it matter if I play? So I. I'm going with your variation f6. I just wanted you uh, to ask you. why this is winning yeah you promote with a check yes i wanted to make sure that you saw that the promotion is with a check yes very good okay white is to move what to play Tyler, are you still there? Tyson says A4. Okay, and then how does it continue after King C5? a4, king c5, and then what's next? Amen. Welcome. A5, yes. So that's the way those two pawns can protect each other. A4, A5. King goes here. Yes. The king goes back. Take the pawn. If the king goes to B7, what do we play?
C5. Yes, that's the nicest way. Very good. Okay. Why is the move? How do you win? This is about six one. Kaisen sees it. G three, G five, G four, and Black has to give up his pawn, and White wins. Okay. White is to move. What would you play? Yeah, we have to transform it, yes? Because the key squares of this pawn are those squares. So if the king can just eat it, he will win. So a5 takes, and then we have to get to these squares. So go to d1, and then I make a draw. Okay. Black is to play. How do you win? King b8, yes, like this. And you eat the pawn. But not b6 because it's a draw. King a8 is also a draw. Because then the king is in time. Okay. Black is to move. What would you play? b6 yes the one that's going for promotion first and after that a6 and b5 yes advance the candidate past pawn first don't let it be blocked black has to make a draw So the key squares of this pawn are here, and white would just like to take here and then go to a key square. What to do? King c3, okay, and then a4. Yes. OK. 
Okay, let's go to the next one. What do you play here? Black is to move. What would you play? Black is to move. Yeah, G5. So first week in the pawn structure. And then you play your king here and then it is a draw because these are the key squares of the pawn yes no way to get there all right let me go to the next one one moment Okay, what would you play here? Black is to move. Black is to move, what would you play? A5. So, how does it continue after A5? Take. I have to. And now? King B5. Okay, that was your plan. Okay. King is coming. All right, so A5, we take. What is your plan, Amir and Ayman? What is your plan? Are you guessing, Ayman, or do you know? What's your variation? What does white play after king takes C5? What do you think he will play? So after king c5, white will play a4. So what's your next move, Ivan? Mean? 
Yeah. So this is this is so Kaizen came up with another plan. It says, okay, A5 look nice to blow up the whole pawn structure, but now that I see it that the king can protect the A3 pawn and he has, he has an outside pawn. Um, I don't really like it anymore. So a6, that's the right idea, yes? Yeah? So you wanna, you, you would like to play in this position, king b3, but you don't wanna do it immediately because if you play king b3, there's b5 and you lose because of a breakthrough. So the idea is you prevent b5 and after king d2, then you activate the king. And that's the way to play it. And how does this continue? King d3, king takes here, king c3. Yes. Okay, good. Black to play, what would you do? Thanks, Hans. Black to play, what would you play here? Any suggestions? King d6, yes. You push the a pawn, yeah. So the idea here is yes. Idea is first you fix the pawn structure of your opponent, and then you're going to enter with your king. So if you play king d6, for instance, look. All the squares are taken, and if you then push, then he also has a passer, so you can no longer get the king in to support the pawn, because then this one will come out, yes? So the priority is first fix the pawn structure of your opponent, and then after that is fixed, then we're going to win based on this passer, the outside pass pawn. If you would immediately start pushing the pawn yes okay the king comes and then and let's say king d6 then this pawn again and then he even eats it so the idea is fix it and then bring your king so thank you all for joining today um it was a long lesson because there was a lot of prior knowledge i hope you enjoyed the lesson if you did Please like the video, subscribe, and I will post when I will be live again. Thank you all. Bye-bye.